Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today, looking at the WrestleMania 32 match card as we're looking at it right now. And uh, we got a lot of matches uh, that are coming together. We've got three confirmed matches that have already been booked on television. We got one that is going to be booked. Um, Basically, if you live in Canada, you might already know about it. Or if you went to SmackDown, you knew about it also. Or if you're going to be watching SmackDown, you'll be finding out about it tonight. Um, so, you know, we're putting together this card. You can also put together a few other things that are going down. We know that the main event is going to be Triple H against Roman Reigns. It could be debated that you think that the Undertaker versus Shane McMahon in a Hell in a Cell um, with control of the uh, company uh, should be in that main event role. Um... I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, we went through this with the uh, Survivor Series last year, uh, with if Team Cena beat uh, Team Authority, uh, the Authority uh, would be uh, out of power, and they ended up being out of power for about a month. Uh, and then Seth Rollins was able to have John Cena um, bring uh, bring them back, and it seemed like they came back way too early. And uh, I think people remember um, the fact that uh, you know this this came to play. And uh, the, I, I don't know if people really believe that, that Triple H and Steph are going to be taken out of power again. So maybe people are, are reading between the lines that maybe Shane's not going to win this match. And um, I don't know, like we're going to get the same old, same old pretty much. Uh, when it comes down to it, even if I know um, that, that uh, Steph and Triple H aren't really going to be removed from power anytime soon... I would want to see the moment of Shane being in charge, even if it's only for a month or two months, and then they find some way to take it away from him. And uh, I know that it seems cheap, and I know that it makes it seem like, um, you know, the stipulation doesn't matter. But uh, honestly, in my opinion, I think WWE needs a breath of fresh air, even if it is for only for a couple of months. Um, but, you know, there's people posting stories that Shane isn't really back inside of WWE. He's just coming back as a performer. He's only going to be in the, in the company for a few months. But who knows? I mean, maybe you have Shane win and people just don't believe it. And then Raw does a huge number and you actually see some changes on Monday Night Raw, which is going to be hard because with so many writers and the writing team the way that it is, Maybe Triple H is going to find a way to whip it into shape, but I, I don't think that, you know, in a month leading up to WrestleMania, and then maybe a, a few weeks after WrestleMania, you can really, you know, stand a, a big change. People who've been watching a lot of my videos um, around the, the new year, um, I talked about the, the Wrestling Observer having their, um, you know, year... Uh, what was that thing called? The the uh, the prediction show. One of my favorite shows they do. I wasn't able to call into the show, but my prediction for the upcoming year was uh, basically, um, I think that WWE will fire half of the writing staff that they have on there. I believe the number is in the 30s. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised within a couple of years. Um, it's going to be down to just a number of like 10. Uh, 10's enough to have a good little booking thing. I'm getting you know, text from Ravi right now as we speak about the, uh, the WrestleMania trip. But, uh, you know, that is my prediction. They'll have a half as many guys around. They'll find the ones that are really good at what they do and they'll keep those ones. And, you know, you know, maybe it'll get to the point where you don't have as many writers. So you can pay the writers that are good more money and it makes them stick around for a longer amount of time, um, with the company. Um, so we'll see what goes down with that, but uh, those are your two big matches. Brock Lesnar against Dean Ambrose is going to be happening in a street fight, and uh, that'll be uh, a really fun match. I'm hoping for Dean Ambrose to win that one, honestly, because I think it'll be for the better of WWE and the better of, of Roman Reigns and, and their feud somewhere down the road. Now, um, the next match is a SmackDown spoiler. Odds are you're probably not going to watch it. I know that the SmackDown numbers are up, but I don't really see a lot of people talking about SmackDown since moving to the USA. But Charlotte will be defending her Divas Championship in a three-way dance against Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. Um, it looks as if the New Day is going to be going up against the League of Nations, which is sort of a, a yawner. Uh, I know that the New Day looked like they were turning babyface uh, when they were going up against the League of Nations, but now they're going up against Y2AJ, um, so it looks like they're back as heels. Uh, the League of Nations definitely looked like heels on Monday, um, you know, joining up, uh, you know, with the, the beatdown of Dean Ambrose with Triple H, so I don't know if they're just having New Day be heels until maybe... After this, I, I don't know. It's almost like that, you know, Divas Revolution thing where it was like, you know, Team Bad was always a heel. But it was like the Bellas were, you know, flipping back and forth, mattering if they were fighting against Team PCV or if they were fighting against, against, Team, B, uh, against Team Bad. It's like uh, uh, the New Day are just these in-between tweeners. Um, 
Notes in the Observer is that WWE is expected to shoot an angle between two top guys to set up a match. Honestly, in my opinion, I think that's going to be AJ and Chris Jericho. Whether if they break up on Raw or whether if they break up defending their titles um, at uh, Breakdown uh, on the way to WrestleMania, that March to WrestleMania preview, uh, not preview, uh, special. That's going to be on the network. We'll see what that goes down with that. But honestly, I think that's going to be AJ and Jericho having that match. Uh, from there on out, there's going to be some sort of a second women's match. Um, as of right now, there's no celebrities. I know that they like to throw celebrities in there with the Divas. Uh, whether if that's bringing back uh, Maria Menudos or whatever the heck her name is from Extra. Like when she had that match with Eve and uh, Eve, Kelly Kelly and Beth Phoenix. Um, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal looks to be making its third run, um, bringing all the guys onto the main show. Uh, and then it looks like they're doing some sort of a multi-person match with Kevin Owens uh, for the Intercontinental Championship. That's probably why we've seen The Miz, as well as Dolph Ziggler, um, start their little mini feud. Maybe they'll do the same thing they did last week with just basically every mid-card guy will get a win on Raw or SmackDown, heating up the uh, the mid-card division, making everybody 50-50. And even though it's looking like it's probably going to be a match with a lot of good names in it, nobody will really care about what's going down. As of right now, it looks like the returning list of legends is going to be Steve Austin, the Rock, Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair, uh, and even Mick Foley. Um, we don't know if uh, you know how these guys are going to be used, uh, but honestly, in my opinion, I think you save them all uh, for the big dance, and uh, you find some way to have like an NWO versus DX invasion into that Shane McMahon and Undertaker Hell in the Cell, and have everybody you know sort of fighting each other. You could get that dream square off of. The Rock versus Shawn Michaels that we've never seen. You could see, you know, maybe after The Rock hits a rock bottom on Shawn Michaels, then he turns around and The Rock takes a stunner from Stone Cold Steve Austin, and then you get the pop of that Austin versus versus Rock thing that went on for years, and maybe Shawn Michaels can super kick Ric Flair or something like that, and one guy after another guy, you know, knocks each other out with their finisher, and you get like 16 pops in a row. But as of right now, that's the WrestleMania 32 card. It looks like it's going to be a good one. Like I said, I, I went into WrestleMania with no expectations. It was just sort of the one thing on the show that was bringing me and my friends together. But as of right now, I mean, I can talk for hours about the, the two key matches. Triple H versus Roman Reigns and Undertaker versus Shane McMahon. So I guess I'm pretty fired up for it. Good times, everybody. See you guys in Dallas or down the road.